everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's production diary. And I'm going to share with you the two big goals that I have in the job jar list this week. Number one is this mandolin right here. This is the one that you just saw me take out of the fretboard gluing jig. I glued the fretboard on last week. It is an oval hole, uh, maple body with a mahogany neck and uh, the things that need to be done before it is ready to put its clear coats on will be to put the glue the peg head overlay on and then just clean it up sand it all the way down to 220 grit 320 grit make sure everything's good put some stain on it clean up the binding and then it's ready for the clear coats and i probably will not put the clear coats on it because if you recall from a couple of episodes ago uh, there's so much relative humidity in the air that it's next to impossible to shoot lacquer finish right at the moment in East Tennessee without a climate control shop, which I don't have. So uh, I've got two more hanging on the wall that have the stain on, but they're just waiting for better weather to shoot clear on. And this one will go and hang with them. So that's goal number one is to get this mandolin as far along as I can get uh, this week and then goal number two will be the um, five mandolins that last week I put the I had the bodies and I in, installed the necks in those mandolins last week all five of them and now we have five mandolins that don't have backs on them so the rest any any time that I'm not working on this mandolin here uh, this week I'll be working on the backs and trying to get those ready to install on those mandolins in there. And so uh, as they get done, then I'll be going back on the, the, that. And hopefully I'll get all of those done before the week's end, but I really kind of doubt it. I, this is a full week's worth of work between this mandolin, uh, which will, will take me a, a day or a day and a half, and I've got to leave. Uh, it's Monday now, but I've got some stuff to do in town this afternoon. So. I really doubt that, that this one will be done before tomorrow sometime or maybe tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow afternoon. So uh, I doubt I'm going to get all of those jobs finished, but I'm going to give it a good old college try. So here we go. And uh, I'll take some footage, as always, uh, when I see something that seems to be worthy of sharing with you. I now have the peg head overlay glued on that oval hole mandolin. Here's a shot of that. And I was rummaging through some backs that I had carved, some extra backs that I had carved who knows how long ago. And I found one I thought was suitable for this first A style mandolin that we're going to put it back on this week. So I just said, you know what, rather, uh, uh, I still have to carve those backs, but at least here's a head start on one of them. So I'm going to glue this one on right now. And that glues this back on. Frets are now this oval hole A style, which is about the last major significant thing that has to be done besides your final sanding and sizing uh, before this thing is ready for the stain and whatever comes after that. So pretty big deal. Last thing done on this mandolin here. That same mandolin that you've just now looked at with the new frets has now been sanded all over really good with 220 grit paper. I have wet everything down to raise the grain and sanded it again. And so this one is pretty much ready to do whatever uh, next steps are going to be to uh, put a finish on it. And I'm going to try something completely different and uh, and I'll explain it to you in just a minute. But first, I'm going to take the fretboard up and put the uh, handle in here 
and close the sound hole off so that we don't shoot finish down in there. So let me do that and I'll be right back to explain to you the, uh, the odd way that I'm going to try to get color and finish on this instrument. Okay, I'm back. Now, the truss rod pocket access has been uh, taped up. The fretboard has been taped up. I have uh, some paper stuff down in here so that the overspray can't go down in there. And I have the um, handle uh, tapped and everything, so it's ready just to have the handle screwed in and we can proceed with the coloring. Now, I envision something entirely different than a normal sunburst for the coloring pattern here. And what I have in mind is to do it much like you would an acoustic guitar. To that end, we're going to not stain anything. This is one of those walnut peg head overlays, a figured walnut peg head overlay. And I'm going to just shoot clear on the top. This is a mahogany necked instrument, so I'm just going to shoot clear on the neck itself and I'm going to stain the body sides and back with just a nice solid color you know no sunburst solid chocolate brown now my issue right at the moment and I've been studying on this for the last couple of days about the best method to go about getting this without having a lot of bleed over and everything especially in this area here so what I'm going to do, and, and you can follow right along with me, I'm going to take this neck off very, as, as best I know how, and then I'm going to take a brush and some shellac and do the whole neck. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole neck, but the, the main thing is I want to get the... Uh, just this joint right here and I want the mahogany to be sealed as much as possible so that I can do the taping process in reverse and take once the shellac is dried tape the neck up and hopefully I can put the brown stain on and use a brush right here and then a rag to wipe the rest of it on and there won't be any bleed but, uh, from the stain into the mahogany. It'll be a nice crisp color line. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the plan and the idea. So come along with me and we're gonna give this a, a wild shot. This is something that I don't normally do. Normally it's just a nice sunburst. You spray everything, you airbrush everything and you scrape it all off and you're done. But here I want certain pieces of this instrument to be stained and other pieces to not have any stain on it at all. And so uh, this, this is really different than what I normally do. So we're going to learn together as I try to get the color stain on this particular instrument. Now I have the heel taped up as um, best I know how. So we are going to open this can of shellac and I'm going to dip down in there with the paintbrush and paint so much and then I'll take a rag and just uh, take a rag and wipe it on the rest of the neck and that's just kind of neat so that I don't get any kind of color weird stuff happening on this mahogany I just want something to seal this mahogany as best as I can so that any bleed, when I stain the body, any bleed through under the tape, we're going to take the neck off when we stain the body, but anything that might bleed under, I don't want it to get in the wood pours on this mahogany so that's the whole idea we're gonna do as much as we can to keep the neck and the uh, body as separate as possible up until the point of where we start putting just a clear coat on the whole instrument
that wood right there really doesn't need to have any stain on it. It is so smooth and even and pretty. I just felt like it would be much better if we just left it alone. check it after it's dry. I won't pull the tape off just yet and if it needs if it seems like that mahogany has soaked up a whole lot of the shellac I may do it again. I don't know. We'll just see. Like I said earlier this is pretty much a learning experience for me. Some of you guys out there probably already know how to do this and are just shaking your head. So, we're just going to let that dry. Not a whole lot I can do about it now. Let that dry and we'll see what we'll see what we've got. Well, I put a couple more coats on there and uh, taken the tape off and it's got a nice crisp line and so I'm just going to let that hang here and dry and then uh, tomorrow we'll do basically the same thing in reverse. Take this neck off and put a little stain on the body sparingly up here uh, or with a light brush, you know and uh, hopefully we'll get us a nice clean sharp line there but i feel like i've done about all i can do today so we're going to hang that here and let it dry and i'm going into the big room to work on those backs let me cut in here real quick and say that the amazon delivery truck just showed up and dropped off a gift from uh, one of the uh, folks that watch this video series on a regular basis and Mr. Ivy and I want to thank you so very much for this These are marking pens very unusual and I had never seen anything like that before But they're designed to be able to mark down in a, a deep hole or You know around templates and that sort of thing and you know what I am getting ready when I, when I told you I was getting ready to work on these backs I'm getting ready to mark on these backs and we'll just give these things a try. And again, thank you so very much for this very thoughtful gift. And we're going to go see if they work. Okay, here's this pile of backs. And for those of you who watch the series on a regular basis, you know that I have already carved and smoothed out the inside. And then I set up a stop on the drill press and uh, drill down to a certain thickness you can kind of see it right there and uh, all over and that's kind of my first step in in carving the outside down to kind of match what we've got on the inside and, and then of course we'll, it, we'll go through this process uh, two or three different times and leave the middle and get the edges and you get the whole thing tapered down the way it's supposed to be but this is job number one is just to get the bulk of the wood off of the the backs and uh, if we're going to make a, a an A model I will cut these off and this off right here and just have that's how we'll make an A model but if we're going to use an F style we're going to make F style backs out of them then we don't want to I don't want to carve in to where the scroll is going to be, so I always try to mark those out. And we're going to try and see these are this is this template is not a deep thing, but the principle is basically the same. This uh, I need to know where that scroll button is going to be, so I don't carve it away in the process of carving this stuff down. And so 
we are going to take this thing right here and hold this over come a little a little too far which is fine and sure enough that thing will fit right down in there and mark that so now when I'm carving I know not to go past that line right there how cool is that let me do this then usually I just kind of take a a straight edge and just go right down through here and so at least for this initial this initial uh, rough in I don't want to go any farther than that line right there so let me let me lay this pin out here and try to get a real close-up so that you can kind of see what what it is but it worked just wonderfully for that job let me slide this away and we'll we'll take a look at them Okay, here we go. This thing is a Pika ink deep hole marker, and uh, it's you, you. You would think that you would pull that out, and that's just that's just the cover right there. But there it is, and you can see the tip right here. Looks like that's about three quarters of an inch, and then uh, it barrels. Uh, enlarges just a little bit right there but still it uh, you can reach a pretty deep hole pull it out it says it's a 1.5 millimeter a fine thing and I'm not sure that I understand it but it says that it's got a apparently you can twist that tip in there somehow or another to uh, to make it last longer if I understood it correctly I'm gonna get on the internet and see if I can't get some better instructions but uh, and it also uh, uh, on it there somewhere it says it's refillable so uh, what a wonderful thing and it works quite well for what what we've tried it for there didn't it so again thank you well it is time to see if the experiment's going to work I'm going to take the neck off and try to get some stain on the body Okay, the staining is done now. I taken the tape off. I got exactly what I was hoping for. I have a nice crisp line of uh, separation between the uh, unstained mahogany neck and the stained body. It is nice and clean. I'm just thrilled to bits. Um, now I'd like to shoot a tack coat over that. Uh, to hold this stain on while I clean the binding and everything and if you recall from the last uh, two or three uh, episodes ago we were talking about real high humidity rates and everything so I went and checked on the humidity rates uh, the humidity uh, levels today and uh, about two o'clock it's going to be 63% so I've got a little bit of lacquer in here and I thinned it down real good. I'm going to turn the air conditioner on in this room. It's about uh, 11 o'clock right now. So I'll come back around two or three and see if I can't get a light coat on this uh, mandolin here to hold everything in place without it milking up too bad. 
to give you a close-up shot of it. And there it is. There's a good shot of the nice crisp line there on the uh, joint between the body and the neck. Come out really well. Good colors, I think, and especially by the time we put the uh, clear color on that right there, and that'll richen that brown up just a little bit. We have a nice clean white top, uh, a nice figured walnut overlay. I think everything is going to be just fine, and we'll find out in a couple hours when the two o'clock hour and the low hum the lowest humidity of the day rolls around. I'm going to give it a shot and see how it turns out. Until then, I'm going to go back and work on those backs some more. Well, it seems like Monday was just a couple of days ago, but in actuality, Monday was five days ago, and it is Friday morning. And what I have on the job jar list for today is to put backs on the three remaining F-style mandolins. I have two oval holes and one master model made out of bird's eye maple. And I would like to get backs on all three of those, if at all possible today. And I have the backs mostly prepared for that job, mostly. And uh, this particular oval hole has been ordered with a K and K internal twin pickup. So I'm gonna have to start the day off by installing this pickup and this mandolin before I can put the back on. And uh, hopefully I will get all three of those backs on today. But if not, then it'll bleed over into next week's video, which I certainly hope that you will come back and share a few more minutes with, of your time with me on next week's video, as, the same as you've done on this video. And we look for you, uh, forward to seeing you then. So with having said all that, I'll close this video off and we'll look for you next week. Thanks. Bye.